Hey everybody, welcome. We are on government intervention per unit subsidies. Now this is going to be kind of a big video. Why? Because I'm going to go through three graphs. Why am I going to go through three graphs? Because there's three ways we can handle subsidies, okay? One way we could do it is by shifting the supply curve. Why? Because sometimes per unit subsidies, the government hands the money to the supplier. So if the government is giving the per unit subsidy to the supplier, shift the supply curve. That's what we're going to do here. Think about farm subsidies. Now, there are times, it's not often, that the government can actually give the per unit subsidy to the consumer, to the buyer of the good. Think of education, okay, or maybe even healthcare. We could give a per, we could give a per unit subsidy in that situation to the consumer. If we give it to the demand or the consumer, we're going to shift the demand curve. And then finally, we can do this by using a subsidy wedge. There's a per unit subsidy wedge, just like there's a per unit sub, uh, per unit tax wedge, okay. So per unit subsidy wedge. That's what we're going to use here. And what we're going to find out, once we've done all the work on these three graphs, is pretty much most of what we're going to get, the result, the market result, is the same, okay? Pretty much identical, with just a little bit of caveats in there. So let's go for it. This time, this is the farm subsidy, right? We're giving the money to the producer, to the supplier of the good. So what's going to happen? Give the money per unit. Every time they produce the good, we're getting per unit subsidy. So what's happening? Their marginal cost is going down. Pretty straightforward, right? Their marginal cost is going down. So... I'm going to draw the new curve right there. This is supply with subsidy. It's marginal cost minus per unit subsidy, okay? Notice it's minus per unit subsidy because we're lowering their per unit cost. Now let's annotate this. Let's get everything on there that we want. First, let's go back pre-subsidy. Pre-subsidy, supply and demand, they were hitting right there, and that was our quantity market and our price market pre-subsidy was right there, price market. Post subsidy, the new curves are intersecting right there. So just what we would probably assume would go up if we're gonna give money to the producer for producing the good, we're gonna get more produced, right? I mean, we can even see the supply curve shifted right. We got more quantity supplied at every price point because once again, that marginal cost went down. But here's where it gets interesting, the vertical axis, okay? Watch how this kind of works right here. Now, we're going to go here, we're going to say, okay, that's the price subsidy, if you will. That, you might even think of that's the price tag. So here's how it goes down now. The consumer is going to pay that much. That's how much the consumer is going to pay, but that's not going to be the per unit revenue of the producer. Why? Because the consumer hands that to the producer, and then the government is going to hand, now hold on a second, because I've got to make sure I get this at least close to being right at the right part. That distance, okay, right there, that vertical distance, that's the per unit subsidy, that money is going to the producer from the government. So consumer gives that much to the producer, government gives that much to the producer, leaving us with a PP way up there, okay? So the per unit revenue goes up for the producer, the per unit cost or per unit price for the consumer went down, the benefits are being shared. Now, here, different situation. Now the government's going to actually physically give the per unit subsidy to the consumer, not to the producer. In this particular case, we're going to shift the demand or marginal benefit curve. In fact, the best way to think about it is this. So we got the marginal benefit of acquiring the good, of getting the good. Now, not are they going to get the good, but they're going to get money on top of that, right? So this is an additional benefit, right? The per unit subsidy is an additional benefit to the consumer. So I'm going to shift the curve right there. This is now demand with subsidy, or it is our marginal benefit plus per unit subsidy. Now let's just take a second here, okay? Marginal benefit plus per unit subsidy. That is an additional benefit, additional benefit. The subsidy, giving money to the producer, is a subtraction from their cost, is reducing their cost, okay? Here comes the market outcomes. Now pay close attention because it gets kind of interesting. The, the old market, or before the subsidy, put it that way, before the subsidy, of course, we were at the old supply and demand curve. That was Q market, and this was price market. Now, I'm going to erase, grab this little eraser right here. I'm going to erase just a little bit of that. Okay, we're just going to have to remember what that was because I want to really show you what happens to price now. Okay, so we might say, hey, there it is, and we're right. That is a price, okay? That is the price producer. So here's how it's going to go down. The consumer is going to hand, hand that much money to the producer.
But that we're not going to put PC, even though the consumer is handing that much money to the consumer, because remember, the consumer is getting money from the government. How much money are they getting from the government? That amount right there. So we're going to go right there, put a little dash, okay, PC. So every time the consumer buys one, they're getting that much from the government. So pay that to the producer, but get that from the government. The actual cost right there, PC. Now take a look at this. PP, PM, PC. Okay, oh, I didn't even put PC, but trust me, that was the PC. Remember, consumer pays that, government pays that, producer ends up with that. So PP, PM, PC, PP, PM, PC. Very interesting. Same results. QM, Q subsidy. QM, oh, I didn't put my Q subsidy, but there it is. Q subsidy. Same distance, same distance. Looking very similar. Doesn't matter who we actually give the uh, subsidy to. In fact, look, the benefit's absolutely being shared. The producer per unit revenue going up, the per unit cost to the consumer going down. The producer per unit revenue going up, the consumer's per unit cost going down. In both situations, in all situations, the benefit of the subsidy is truly being shared no matter who we give the money to, whether it's the consumer or the producer. So that's why a lot of teachers just say, just use a subsidy wedge because you're going to get PP and PC in the right place. Everything that you need to know, you can find out just with the subsidy wedge. Now, what I like to say is the subsidy wedge comes from the right, okay? Why does it come from the right? Because it's going to increase our output, okay? On this graph, I'm actually going to label the QM and the price M right off the bat. Now, here comes the subsidy wedge. The base, that amount, right? It's going to fit in there nicely, okay? It will find that way. As long as prices are flexible, it's going to find its way right in there. This is going to be PP, and this is going to be PC. Same result as we always get. Per unit revenue going up. Producers are benefited by subsidies. No matter who you give the money to, get, they are benefited. Hey, think about it this way. You're producing a good and the government says, hey, every time your consumers buy your good, we're going to give them money. We'd be happy. Like, we know some of that money is going to come our way. It's intuitive, right? And the cost, the per unit cost to the consumer, absolutely going down. If the government gave some money to the producer instead, would the consumer be happy if they were consuming that particular good? They would be because they'd know, hey, I bet you some of that price is going to come down. The benefit is getting shared. One last thing. There's the base of the subsidy wedge. Just take that base all the way right down. Q sub. Take a look at these graphs. They're all giving us the same result. I know I'm standing in the way, right? But PP, PM, PC, QM, Q sub. PP, PM, PC, QM, Q sub. PP, PM, PC, QM, Q sub. It doesn't matter if we give the money to the producer or the consumer. As far as the true market outcomes, what we really care about, the per unit cost to the consumer, the per unit revenue to the, produ to the producer, the quantity that's now going to be produced post-subsidy, all of it is all based on the elasticities of the curves, not who the government actually gives the money to. Now you just got to stay tuned to actually see some real detail on how the elasticities of the curve affect the benefits of subsidies and the burdens of taxes. Anyhow, hope that worked out for you. Hope that made sense to you. We'll see you in the next video.